there. I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves and enjoy a little chocolate. I am a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. Okay. Now, if you have been listening with me or to me for a while, you know that my oldest son is a high school senior. And I'm just going to warn you right now that this will not be the last time you hear me tell you this. <laughs> it says I am in that season of transition and all of the feels about having a senior. And actually, just this morning, my walking partner, Laura, whom you met on the 200th episode celebration podcast a few times ago, was asking me how I felt about it. So she has some kids, she has two of hers are who have left home, um, or graduated from high school, and then one still in it. So she's been there before. And I said, you know, I just kind of have mixed emotions about it. On the one hand, I'm like, so sad that this human being is leaving my house. I mean, he is fun. He is cool. He just takes up a lot of like energy and space. I mean, he just brings life to wherever he is. And I will deeply miss him. But on the other hand, he is ready to launch. He definitely has senioritis and he's ready to go. He's ready to do things, get into the next phase, start uh, learning deeper things in college, start looking forward to the rest of his life. And so I'm excited for him in that way, but I'm really sad that he's leaving and he's just not going to be around. But then I did say, I have to admit, meals are going to get more interesting when he's gone because he has always been the kid who just likes everything deconstructed. So he wants his protein one way, veggie one way, carb one way. He's not like, oh, they can't touch. He just doesn't want everything pushed together. I mean, even like with sandwiches, he likes to have the bacon on the side rather than a bacon in you know, a sandwich or a burger or something like that. He just likes everything deconstructed as much as possible. My younger one appreciates a lot of different flavor combinations. I mean, he'll, we can throw everything into in and he just loves it. Uh, And the older one is just super simple. So I've never really complained about how he ate because what he likes is good and he likes good quality things and he eats, you know, a variety of stuff. And for the most part, he eats vegetables when I put it in front of him and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, he eats well, he just likes it very simple. So with my younger one, he likes a lot of things mixed together. And specifically, he likes pasta. <laughs> now, I have not been making pasta very much uh, as, as my older one has been um, in my house because he just doesn't like it. And you know, we all have our own different philosophies on this. But it's not that I cater to my kids, but because they are so active, I do want to make sure that whatever I'm putting in front of them, that they will consume that they will fuel their bodies well. And that's just a choice that I made, maybe I've made life harder on myself, I don't really know. And I've had a lot of conversations with other moms who kind of have the same struggle. Like I want my kids to have quality food, but I'm not a short order cook. And, uh, you know, it's just like, it's a struggle, right? Like it's, it's, it's a struggle to figure out what to put on the dinner plate at night when we go through the effort of making dinner, because that's the other thing I'm just going to be really honest about. If I go through the effort of making a dinner and spend 30 to 45 minutes in the kitchen, I want people to eat it. Like it's just kind of insulting when they don't. (laughs) And the other aspect of all of this is as our children get older, they want more control. They want more control of when, when they go to bed, they want more control of when they come home, they want more control of managing their own schoolwork. I mean, all of this kind of stuff, which is a total natural progression of growing up, I get that. But with regard to food, my challenge, like I said, is giving them the chance to have that control while still offering them foods and options that will make them fuel and perform well, because I do want them to go into whatever it is, even if it's not athletics, fueled well, maybe it's just going to school and getting those good quality carbohydrates for their brain. 
So this is how I have worked around that. Now, this is not every meal, but there are it probably at least once a week, week, I do something what I call like make your own buffet style dinners. And this has been such a lifesaver in giving my kids control over what they eat. But for me to still feel good and peaceful, we'll just say about the offerings that are out there. So today I want to give you some of the meals that I provide my family that fit this bill, like it can go out on the countertop and let everybody choose. And then I'm not having these difficult conversations. Now I will say sometimes I impose boundaries like, okay, you need to choose at least one vegetable or you need to choose one, you know, something like that. But for the most part, I just kind of put it out there. I guide them and I bite my tongue. I've been trying, you guys, I've been trying so hard to bite my tongue more lately. Like, I'm just not saying anything. I'm just not saying anything. You are 18 years old. And even though I really want you to eat your asparagus, I'm just not going to say anything because you're a big boy. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to put this as a blog post on my website. You can get the link in the show notes. So I'm just going to run through all of these. And I have about five different suggestions of kind of your of a make your own style dinner. One of them is not necessarily buffet style, but you'll get the you'll get the feel for that. And you can head over there to get some ideas or to to see some of the ingredients. And I will say this too, I am sure I will miss something on here. I'm sure that there's something out there that you're like, Oh my gosh, you totally should have mentioned that. So if that's the case, I want you to email me. I have the email, my email in the show notes and email me and let me know. And I will give you a shout out on social media. We'll put that out there because I just think that there's nothing better than friends helping friends and getting ideas. And I would love to hear uh, what I missed. Okay, so let's start at this. So the first one is what I call a burrito bowl. Uh, Funny little side story, my son enjoys my older one, my son (laughs) enjoys Chipotle. And there's, you know, that's a really great way to obviously make your own burrito bowl. But he never wants to go there. Like his friends will say, Hey, let's go to Chipotle. He's like, eh, no. And I was like, why don't you go there? Like, it's good. It's tasty. It's good. Like quality food. He was like, I get just as good of a burrito bowl at your house, mom. He was like, why would I pay for that? So I was like, Oh, okay, well, that's nice. But anyway, what do we have in our burrito bowls? So these are this is not what I put all out on the countertop, I will mix it up. So that way we have variety as well. But just some ideas, you can do grilled chicken, you can do grilled beef or grill or pulled pork. That's a great one to make you can make pulled pork and then put it in a lot of different, um, a lot of different meals. Sometimes I'll put brown rice out there riced cauliflower. And then you can do all the fixings, tomatoes, pico, black beans, charro beans. I've done sauteed kale. That's actually pretty good, believe it or not. Guacamole, cheese, sour cream, all of the basics. Um, I'm sure that none of this is super familiar to you. But what I do, again, I just think it's really powerful when everything is out in front of them and they can choose and you can go from there. Another one is what I now call big salad. And this was suggested on our Facebook group by one of our community members named shout out to you, Kathleen for telling me about it. So Kathleen started it, she was telling me that they do triathlon clubs, and they will all bring one salad ingredient to their club, like if they have a club dinner, and then you can choose it. So there's all kinds of different offerings to put on salad. And I just loved this concept because what it does, I will often have big salad later in the week and I will make extra roasted vegetables. So that way we can have leftovers for big salad night. So I specifically do this with asparagus. I'll do it with Brussels sprouts. I'll do it with beets. Those are kind of like the three main things that I will do. Roasted cauliflower is really good on it, but having those extra roasted vegetables where you've already done the work, just do a little bit more when you're making it and save it and then put it on big salad night on Thursday or whenever you have it. So obviously, you want to start off with some mixed greens, chopped romaine, something like that, something that green leafy, if your kids like the iceberg lettuce better, maybe challenge them to have iceberg and 
something else. So kind of mix it in together. We already talked about the roasted vegetables, um, all kinds of nuts or seeds. Pumpkin seeds are a big favorite at my house. I don't, I'm not really sure why, probably because the pumpkin seeds that I buy have a lot of salt on them and they're really salty and everybody likes that. Uh, another option is roasted chickpeas. I've been roasting uh, my own chickpeas in an air fryer and it just adds a nice little crunch. Jicama, I don't use that a lot, but I see that. Um, I will grab it like in salad bars. I just don't ever take the time to chop it up is the real, <laughs> is, is the honest answer. Pickled items are really good. So I have a friend who puts pickles in hers. Another one that is really good is banana peppers. And then I would say if you're having big salad as a dinner, add some carby options. So maybe that's corn or beans. You can do grains like uh, farro's really good if you are not gluten free. Um, if you are, then you can do a quinoa or rice or buckwheat, even though buckwheat has the word wheat in it, and it is gluten free, just so you know. And then add some fruit. I shared uh, in my monthly journal, which I hope you get if you are not already on it, make sure you subscribe. I've got that in the show notes as well. But I shared about my January salad that I ate so much that I just got addicted to and that had grapefruit in it. And then I used a dressing of just olive oil and grapefruit juice and it was delicious. It was just zest. It was just it was so refreshing. Um, you can also add oranges, apples, blueberries, any kind of those fruits. But if you are doing a big salad, I would suggest that you have some sort of fruit or grain or bean to add some carbohydrates to it. So it's more of a complete meal. Another offering is that's t I'm not even going to get into because you know, but make your own pizza, you can get a, a crust, make a little assembly line and everybody makes their own. So you know, the types of things that people like putting on pizza and what your family likes putting on pizza. And I think that that's a good one to say like, hey, let's just choose one of the vegetable options. And you can choose everything else. So if that's what something you want to do. Okay, next up, this is something that my mom used to do, and I kind of forgot about it. And I did it recently. And it was such a hit. So actually, as I'm recording, this is what is on the dinner menu for tonight, but a baked potato bar. Look, white baked potatoes get such a bad rap. And I would like to remind you that number one, they are food from the earth. So in my opinion, this is a really great thing that God gave us to eat. Uh, but they also are really high in potassium. They have a lot of fiber when you eat the skin. And even though they, they obviously they have a lot of carbohydrates, when you put things full of protein on them, uh, get some good healthy fats on them, then it's not going to be like super uploaded into your system really well. Baked potatoes are, in my mind, just you know, they're just kind of kicked to the curb. And I don't think they deserve that. I just don't think they deserve that. And before I get into some just thoughts on what you can put on a baked potato, I would like to remind you that you can also do things with sweet potatoes. I don't know if you follow One Lovely Life, but I this is like my go to place when I'm looking for dinner inspiration. And she has six amazing ways to stuff a baked sweet potato. So I'm going to link that in the show notes, you can just go check that out. Because I thought that that there were some really creative ways to do that. And y'all know I like my sweet potatoes. But anyway, back to the baked potatoes, or you know what, do this on either one of them whatever, right? Like we're just trying to go with something that works for everybody or that we, we can all <laughs> that we can all get excited about. So here are some different ideas for your baked potatoes. And I have to give credit to my Facebook group community. Actually, they suggested a lot of these, uh, gosh, a while ago, because I was looking for some ideas. And uh, they had some they have some really great ones. So <clears throat> you could do barbecue chicken, you can do like a buffalo shredded chicken or pork, something that's like with all of that hot sauce, hot buffalo sauce. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I do, I have, I'm starting to like it a little bit better. Uh, taco meat is an obvious one. Uh, you know, you can use ground beef, you can use ground turkey. I do that a lot. You can do like a lentil and black bean mix with taco seasoning if you or your people don't eat, um, don't eat meat. I will often just because I prefer it, I will make like a lentil and black bean mix for myself and then have meat for the rest of my people. And what I do is I will make a big batch of it and then freeze them like in individual serving sizes. So I can pull out 
the um I can just pull it out for myself because everyone else they want they want the bee or they they want the ground turkey. So anyway, just a little side suggestion with that. You can also do chili meat. Um, one member of my community she said we you know, we have both vegetarian and meat offered to my people. Um, as far as like other toppings, obviously bacon, you can do broccoli. I would even say you could do chopped asparagus or roasted cauliflower. Both of those would work in really nicely. Edamame is another option. Um, salsa, you can do, if you like onions, you can do some grilled or caramelized onions, obviously cheese, sour cream. And I would say too, if you're trying to get just a little bit more protein in there, you could do plain Greek yogurt. I can't tell you how many times I have been out of sour cream and been in a pickle and thought, I'm just going to throw plain Greek yogurt in and nobody tell nobody can tell the difference. It's because it's kind of tangy. There's no sweetness in it. So it kind of tastes like sour cream. Then the final um, kind of make your own, which might need a little bit of coordination, it will take just a little bit longer, but might be something different you can do is an omelet. So you can have all of these different options. And then you'll have to make the omelets individually, because and hopefully you don't have like six kids, because that would take a while. So this is probably not for you if you have really if you're serving a large crowd right now. But you can put any kind of sauteed veggies in there. I mean, I just think that there's basically no sauteed vegetable that's not going to work in there. Another thing that I will do is I'll do kimchi. So this is one of my favorites. I do sauteed mushrooms, goat cheese, kimchi, sauteed spinach, and it's delicious. It's just really, really good. Um, You can do, I don't even know what you would call that. You can call it Amy's, Amy's omelet. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, You can have like more of a Mexican flair where there's like pico, avocado. Oh, that's the other thing that I'll put in my omelet sometimes is avocado. Uh, Pico, avocado, Mexican cheese. You can do more like a a Denver omelet, ham and cheese, that kind of thing. Uh, I did see online Taste of Home recommended that you can do leftover fried rice. I've never heard of that, but it might, it sounds interesting. If you do that, you could probably throw your kimchi in there as well. Great for that gut health. Great. <laughs> um, you can do what I would call like a big country. So that's your roasted potatoes, bacon, cheese, kind of get that real big hearty f- uh, flavor in it. And then another one I saw that I have not done, but looks interesting is like an Italian pizza. And that has mushrooms, onion, mozzarella cheese, or any kind of cheese, you can top it with marinara sauce. So I thought that kind of sounded interesting too. So those are the suggestions that I have. And I would really love it if you would reach out if there are some other ones and we will get that on the socials and spread the love and I'll put it in my journals. But if you have any other things that you do as kind of a make your own to give your picky eaters control, then let me know. I would love to do that. Just as a quick recap, I will go through um, the ones that I suggested. We can do burrito bowls. We can do big salad make your own pizza, baked potatoes, sweet or white. Make sure you check out that link with for the sweet potato stuffed potatoes and omelet. Real quick, before we finish up, if you found any kind of value in today's show or just in general in this podcast, here are three simple things that would be super valuable to me. Number one, rate and review this podcast. I know it can be confusing to do, especially on Apple. I have a link that you can just click on there and leave a review. The stars are super helpful, um, be honest, but then also so are the written reviews. I mean, just one sentence really does make a big difference. Number two, sign up to receive those monthly journals, just like the one I was talking about earlier. This is a subscriber space only. So I don't put this stuff out on the internet. You can't be like, yeah, I'll just go find that. I'll just kind of poke around on our website. No, it's not there. It's only for the emails people or or for my email community. And that is where I share things that I'm loving. And I think you will too. It's subscriber only. Like I said, I can be as snarky or sassy or serious or all of the above. And I share pictures that I don't typically will share on the internet. And we just have a lot of fun over there. Number three, you can purchase a copy of my book, Your Worthy Body. Now look, this is not a diet book. This is not a quick weight loss book. It is a cross-cultural, grace-filled look at how to change our mindset about our 
body, eating, and movement. I give you all kinds of applicable things, resources, workouts, recipes, you name it. And it's all done through a lens of faith. So I would love for you to grab your copy. You can get um, you can get it over at Amazon. And if you want to be my if you want me to hold your hand and take you there, there's a link in the show notes. So I make it simple, simple. Okay, every episode, I try and leave you with one simple thing to remember. And I'm going to give you a super applicable one simple thing today. That is for your make your own buffet style dinners, schedule that later in the week. And whatever you can make extra of earlier in the week and save will make that make your own style a lot easier later on. So make extra broccoli, make extra mushrooms, make extra um, roasted asparagus, whatever that is. And that way, it will make it a whole lot easier on you come whatever dinner you have for that make your own style buffet. I don't know if that made sense. I hope that made sense. Okay. That is all for today. Go out there and have a graced day. 